Turning now to day two of a series of discussions on the South Asian subcontinent. And today our discussion surrounds a press photo which emerged over the weekend of a Tibetan independence flag unfurled on the Indian side of a lake in dispute between China and India. An image of the head of the so-called Tibetan, Tibetan government in exile paying respects to a Tibetan flag was released through Indian media on Sunday and said to be taken last Wednesday on the shores of Pangong Lake along the disputed border of China and India. Now, the Tibetan flag is seen as a symbol of Tibetan independence. And while India has previously said to, to discourage such political activities by Tibetan separatists, this time the Indian government has not commented on it. On the same day the picture was released, a spokesperson of the so-called Tibetan government in exile clarified that he mistakenly mentioned the Tibetan flag was hoisted, though in fact the flag was already there. That clarification could allow the Indian government to delink an event that the Chinese media has described as the use of the Tibet card from the ongoing border confrontation. Is India playing the Tibet card? And what is at the heart of India's Tibet policy? And most importantly, with with Beijing, does New Delhi really have a Tibet card to play? Dawad Serin from the China Tibetology Research Center joins us me here in the Beijing studio. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us today. Now, thank first of all, you. last Wednesday, some rituals were performed on the shores of uh, the Lake Pangong along the disputed boundary between China and India. What were these rituals meant for? Uh, as we know that so-called Tibetan government in exile, now that the, uh, the organ was switched the name to the CTI, Central Tibetan Administration, uh, this organ was used every chance to publicize their uh, wrong view on Tibet, and they were, when they usually they used the military, military strip to, to, uh, to separate from Ch China, and uh, so when they were in over overseas, in, especially in India, they used the every stage to say China is using the wrong policy on Tibet, and also they use the uh, spiritual Buddhism and uh, to to take every chance to do their uh, publicity. And now that this time the, there's uh, India and uh, China, there's a kind of this border uh, dispute, and they want to take this time to how to say they enlarge, in, they maximize their interests over there uh, and use the foreign power to, to, to mm. get the, to, to publicize their image and to also to get the interest from this list. Yeah. So I was talking about these rituals, so what were these rituals for? Uh, the timing is very trick and it's the, 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 the timing is the, the Dalai Lama's birthday at that time and yes, as, as, as we know that he is a very has influential in, in terms of Buddhism, at that time there's many people who get around around this area and if there's many people get around there will be media to have uh, to, to get uh, involved and also he the, the there's many people get around and then they will be kind of become a big topic and mm -hmm. then and in, to in, attract in, more in, attention to attract more attention because there's many people yeah. and they're also as you mentioned they're, they're doing some kind of function or uh, uh, like praying for long life for his mm -hmm. the Dalai Lama and then in return for this one, they will, how to say, they will be become th this kind of topic will become hearted and mm. be the, discussed by the people the around the world. Yeah. Media will yeah. be involved. Well, what about this clarification that I just mentioned? This uh, seemingly contradictory statement from the spokesperson of the so-called Tibetan government in exile, first saying yes, it was a Tibetan flag that yeah. was hoisted, but then later on saying the flag was has always been there, he just passed it and he was paying respect to it. I think the spokesperson has no confidence to say this. This is uh, the arrangement. But actually, one that is, there's, there's the picture we can see from the newspaper that this is it's a true. But I'm, after that, he said this kind of uh, coincidence or this kind of, this, it means he has no confidence because India has, government was agreed that the Tibetan is part of China. And if he said this kind of arrangement, that is against that India's be policy. It's a become a political, political uh, mistake or political big, big, big things. Also, there was um, Indian media have been saying that this kind of visits have been held in the past. The only difference was that uh, there were no photo opportunity organized, so no photo ever came out. Why is it that this time there was this photo opportunity? Yeah, from that point of view, we can see the Indian governments have kind of. Uh, 
terms of double standard on Tibetan policy. On one, one hand, they agree that Tibet is part of China and, uh, and the Tibet of China and it belong to China Tibet territories. And on the other hand, there's some official from the Indian government openly or secretly supporting the, the, the so-called CTA. One is they, will, they, they send some official to attend some functions and some kind of then they will make speech and openly support the uh, movement. Sometimes they will provide financial support and also to do the, do the education sections. Mm -hmm. That's the one part. The other one, just from that point on, we can see he, the, the, the authority was want to use the Tibetan cards to become maximize their interests and then in future with the Chinese relation. And then when they're dealing with the Chinas, they have more bargaining chips in, on the table. Um. The timing is also very interesting because, as I mentioned, there is this uh, border standoff between yeah. India and uh, China on the section where there is this tri-junction of China, India and Bhutan. And this picture came out over the weekend almost exactly as mm. the uh, standoff is also very much in the news. Is there any coincidence here? Yes, as the, I, I watched uh, the, the, there is a news uh, we can from see from the foreign spokesperson from and we, and also we can uh, see that from the uh, news news person from the Chinese embassy in India and they say this this incident is quite severe and uh, and the the face of face of the incident and it is it's only the India troop was trans across the border entering into China territory and this is the first time in the Usually it's in, in other parts. Now this, this time is in entering to the Sikkim section. We have never seen this before. Mm -hmm. So that is very, very severe incident. And then, as go back to the CTAs, they want to use this instance to maximize their, uh, how so, say, attract so more attention. Yeah. Um, we were talking about the uh, policy of the Indian government. Since the Prime Minister Modi took office in 2014, have we seen a consistent Tibet policy emerging from this current government? Uh, the scholar in the related field agree that there's, it's very hard to say there's a in Modi government has kind of Tibetan policy. But we can see from some incidents and from that incident we can see he, he, there's, there's a Indian authority use what kind of the, or uh, related policy over the China on Tibetan so they call issue the so-called Tibetan issue. One is that the, as I mentioned that uh, there was there was he will agree to send the official to, to, to the, the functions. And also they will invite the political figures from the CTA to attend their uh, occasion. Mm -hmm. And then also provide some... Uh, what about uh, the scholars? Scholars and uh, uh, China and uh, India, was the, the India agreed to, how say, they, they boost the cooperation between ac in acad academic circles. And also we can see from newspaper that there's many delegations from both sides to go back in, uh, held in, in New Delhi or held in Beijing from the think tank. And they talk how to do, how to arrange for the future. And this is the, I think this is the main trend. On the other hand, we can see from newspaper and also some works and top you know, assets from some very uh, from the scholars, they think that they they want to use the Tibet as kind of buffer zone between India and, 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 and uh, India and China, mm -hmm. and that will reduce their burdens. And they also they think they they are keen to on the uh, new uh, Cold War mentalities, and they just want to use the how to contain the other countries' development and use kind of the bargain clips, and then to maximize their interests. So. He suggests the authority that's used playing the Tibetan card to suggest to his uh, the authority to use that card and to, to, to reach their goal. That's the uh, picture of the academic circle in India. So.
Okay, thank you very much. We have to leave it there. Dao Atirin from the China Tibetology Research Center. And here is my point. Now, in yesterday's program, we talked about an ongoing border standoff between India and China at the tri-junction of uh, India-China Bhutan. Uh, quoting China's attempt to change the status quo by constructing roads, Indian soldiers and bulldozers crossed into Chinese-claimed territory near the Doklam region. Now, amid the heightened tensions, the flag-hoisting photo undoubtedly aroused further suspicion on the part of Chinese press and academia of the intention of the Indian government. Now, the position of the Chinese side is actually quite clear. While many issues could be negotiated, national unity and territorial integrity are non-negotiable. Both the border standoff and the Tibet independence are core interest issues to China. So long as India keeps on trying to play a Tibet card, China can be expected to react strongly. And if you and you cannot blame someone for reacting strongly if you keep poking them where it hurts the most. And you have been watching The Point with me, Lu Xin. We'll take a short break, but don't go away. I'll be back right after this.